is um, helpful. Uh, um, I want to um, start us out by uh, setting us up. The uh, book of Hebrews is a book uh, um, that, that is motivating. It is motivating in every single way. What is the motivation? What are we motivating people to do? Um, Hebrews 3 is about a motivation of change. Uh, keeping us motivated. When we know that we are going through a change, uh, we need to stay motivated. Otherwise, we don't make it through. And we don't make it through the other side of change. And I don't know about you, but I need the motivation. I need the motivation. I have a question for us today. Half Anyone in this room felt like giving up? Yeah. Felt like giving up in one way or another. I'm not here of just to dictate what that is for you, but take a moment and think about it. Like, are there any ways in your life now or has been that there's a point that you're like, I cannot take this, I want to give up? I want to give up. And I think that we um, um, often come uh, to this point of giving up. And I want you to know uh, uh, that at uh, U City, um, if you feel like you are, 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 are giving up, we want to meet you, to love you where you are. We want uh, to help you not to give up. Akimi, like and I pray for you all daily. And, and, and in that, uh, we um, uh, uh, pray that you all, um, that we all move forward as a family and that if there's anything that is coming against us, that we uh, uh, pray that you don't give up and that you persevere. We um, oftentimes find it really hard uh, to just not give up. And one of uh, the ways as human beings that uh, what helps us not to give up is always looking to what's ahead. It's always looking to what's ahead. What is our motivation? What is motivating us in the moment? Um, uh, and in high school, everyone in this room knows that I was the top prospect in playing basketball, looked at by the entire nation. No, I wasn't. It was a small country school that I played basketball for. I was on the basketball team and we weren't that great. Uh, we weren't that great at all. Matter of fact, uh, there was a game that we lost by 50 points and our coach was so upset at us and, and he was so upset at us but now I look back, he should have been upset with himself because he was a terrible coach but he was so upset with us. He told us, he said, and you know what? We have practice a, a, a tomorrow and you will run the entire time. Our practices were three hours long. And we thought he was bluffing. No, he made us run the entire time, three hours sprinting. Here's the deal. We ran these things called, okay, a trigger warning. They were called suicides, where we had just to run up and down the, the court in a certain amount of time. We had uh, just to beat the shot clock in doing that. And it was so hard. If we did not do that, we would have to run it again. And he gave us a number that we had to hit. And maybe that number was like 30 suicides in under 30 seconds. I don't know. 
But it took us the whole practice uh, just a, a to run those suicides. And if we didn't make time, had to run it again. Didn't make time, or we had uh, to run it again. Uh, we ran so much that I wanted to give up. I wanted to give up. And some people did. And I remember one just walked off the court, found a, a trash can, you know, and then he went home. But um, it was so hard, and I was reminded of that time. And I was thinking back to that moment, and I asked myself, man, in this difficult time, in the middle of that running, what motivated me to keep running? Well, one of the things that motivated me was I looked ahead. I looked ahead, okay, if I run these under a certain amount of time, I will be more in shape. Furthermore, it will be over. And I wouldn't have to keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it. And that, uh, and that was helpful for me to, to finish up. Now, do you know what was as motivating, though? Was to be a reminded of the consequences of me not running them in time. Over and over and over again. A quitting was not an option, but prolonging was. And so I think in the book of Hebrews, uh, there uh, you will see two types of motivation for people changing. Uh, these were Jews taking on this concept of, of, of Christianity. What I want to point out is that the Jews were not becoming not Jewish anymore. They held on to who they were. But they just needed to put Jesus in the right place in their life. And, and maybe that's for someone in this room. You don't have to change your personality and you don't have to change who you are or how God designed you. What maybe needs to change is where you place God in your life. And this letter in Hebrews is motivation to change. And we're going to start with the, uh, the good news first, right? And then we're going to go into the not so delicate news. But my hope is delicate news. But my hope is that when we leave here, you are better for it. You are better for it. Uh, if you don't mind standing as we uh, read uh, God's breathed words. It says this. It says, therefore, holy brothers and sisters who share in the heavenly calling, fix your thoughts on Jesus, whom we acknowledge as our apostle and high priest. He was faithful to the one who appointed him. Just as Moses was faithful in all God's house, Jesus has been found worthy of a greater honor than Moses, just as the builder of a house has greater honor than the house itself. For every house is built by someone, but God is the builder of everything. Moses was faithful as a servant in all God's house, bearing witness to what would be spoken by God in the future. But Christ is faithful as the son over God's house, and we are his house. And if indeed we hold firmly to our confidence and the hope in which we glory. Verse 7 says, so as the Holy Spirit says, today, if you hear my voice, do not harden your hearts as you did in the rebellion during the time of testing 
in the wilderness, where your ancestors tested and tried me, though for 40 years they saw what I did. That is why I was angry with that generation. I said, their hearts are always going astray. And they have not known my ways. So I declare an oath in my anger. They shall never enter my rest. Ooh. See it. See to it, brothers and sisters, that none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart and turns away from the living God. But encourage one another daily, as long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. We have come to share in Christ. If indeed we hold our original conviction firmly to the very end, as has just been said. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as you did in the rebellion. Verse 16 says, who were they who heard and rebelled? Were they not all those Moses led out of Egypt? And with whom was he angry for 40 years? Was it not... With those who sin, whose bodies perish in the wilderness, and to whom did God swear that they would never enter his rest, if not to those who disobeyed? So we see that they were not able to enter because of their unbelief. God, thank you for your uh, words. Um, I hope that it really pierced our hearts, Father. Um, help, uh, help us uh, to be open-hearted, um, and to um, feel your uh, power, love, your grace, um, and your mercy. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Uh, uh, you may take your seats. So we get to start with the good news. Here's the good news. As, as I'm running those sprints on that basketball court, I had to think what is motivating me what is motivating me what is the good that is motivating me to keep running and that is the good news and here is the good news in verse 3 it says therefore holy brothers and sisters this means that that uh, Jesus is calling you brothers and sisters and that you are family and family should want the best for each other in God's family, that is how it works. You want the best for each other. You have the best for each other. Not only do you want the best for each other, but you actually have the best for each other. Therefore, brothers and sisters who share in heavenly calling, consider Jesus the apostle and high priest of our confession. That is a lot of Christianese words. But what it's saying is consider Jesus as the highest priority in your life. Not only that, consider him the way. Consider him the way. It, and when you add those things to G, uh, 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 together, when Jesus is the way and you are also family to him, you're good. If Jesus is the way and he's the high priest and you are his family, then you are good. Jesus loves you and you are family to him. And then verse three says, for Jesus is considered worthy of more than Moses. And the, back in this day, Moses was that guy. He was the one almost worshipped. Even they would ask Jesus who he was. And he said, are you Moses? Are you Elijah? They, they looked up to Moses because Moses had history. It may be something like this, and this may resonate for some more than others. He may have been something like, and this is a small glimpse, the Martin Luther King in this day where he led people to a better place. And, and there's a whole holiday. There's a whole month that we celebrate, Black History Month. Right, in light 
of the people who have gone or before us for equality. That's just a small glimpse, but, but, but we weren't technically, I'm going to take that statement back. Legally, we weren't enslaved. Moses led them out of hard labor slavery led their ancestors out of hard labors. And so Moses was that guy. And here, this letter is written and comes in and say, Moses was great, but consider Jesus more than him. He's greater than Moses. Moses managed the house. Moses managed the family. Jesus is the house. And because he is the house, there's protection, there's love, and there's peace for you. Jesus, here's the good news, loves you and calls you family. If you don't really know who he is or care, my hope is that he literally like bombards your life. in such a way that you cannot miss him. Jesus, you are family to Jesus and he loves you. And because he loves you, because he loves you, verse seven happens. Because he loves you, he then tells you what is back there. Listen, running, running up and down the court, I saw what was ahead. That is our natural tendencies. We see what is ahead in life. We're motivated. We got goals. Goals, 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 goals. And that motivates us. And that pushes us forward. But, but, but Jesus is so kind that he made sure that we move forward by also putting goals ahead and making sure that there's danger behind. Have you ran from a dog? I have plenty of times in my life. There's danger back there. I'm running full steam ahead. You were family to Jesus and he loves you. And that should be our motivation to be more like him, to go to him, to experience God. But there's another motivation, and that is verse 7. It says, therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, who is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is our helper and comforter. He's the greatest helper. The Holy Spirit simply helps you. The Holy Spirit helps you. And every single thing, he helps you and you can take it or not. But the Holy Spirit is there to help you while comforting you. So it says, therefore, as our helper says, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts in rebellion. Do not harden your hearts in rebellion. As you did in the last a rebellion, during the time of testing in the wilderness, where your ancestors tested and, and tried me, though for 40 years they saw what I did. That is why I was angry with that generation. I said, their hearts are always going astray, and they have not known my way. So I declare an oath and my anger that they shall never enter my rest. That they shall never enter my rest. Uh, let's uh, look at uh, this word hard-hearted. This word hard-hearted, you can simply uh, tr uh, translate it as like extremely hard-headed. That, that, that your heart is not soft anymore, that, that, that Jesus cannot pierce it, 
that he can't touch you, that he can't direct you, that you don't want to listen to him. You want to go the other way. Hard-hearted people. It says, a, a today, do not be hard-hearted. Why are our hearts hard? Why do our hearts become hard? Maybe, maybe our hearts are become hard when we decide not to take his instruction. When we are running away from his instruction, our heart becomes hard. When the Holy Spirit is trying to help you and you're like, I don't want that help right now. And maybe you don't want that help uh, uh, because you feel like that, 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 uh, that the Holy Spirit is asking something so precious to you that you can't give up. Or maybe you like your old ways and the Holy Spirit is trying to change you to a new way. But you love the old way. And so you're like, nope, I don't want it. And, and that is how you get hard hearted. Heart, uh, your heart hardens slowly. It sneaks up on you. It's not, a, it's not a boom, it becomes hard. You, over time, realize that your heart becomes hard, that you have become hard-headed. I have. And no one can outrun it. It sneaks up on you. And then verse 9 says, where your ancestor tested and, and tried me and saw my works for 10 uh, saw my words for 40 years. What this is talking about is the people of Israel. Moses rescued the people of Israel. Do we know the story? Moses rescued the people of Israel. They were out in the wilderness for 40 years because they were hard-headed. And they were hard-hearted. And what the letter is saying is don't be like them. Man, God's mercy um, it's, it's so there that we can look how other people have lived and not live that way. I'm just now learning that in my life. I used to eat whatever I wanted to. And I still struggle with it. But as I look, and I look at some of my family members and, and what they struggle with and what they deal with and, and, some, and some had... Um, heart failure and oh I can learn from that or I, I cannot I can just go to Burger King and get a Whopper fries and a Sprite with ketchup on the side then I'll go to Chick-fil-A and get a milkshake man then I'll stop at Pizza Hut on the way home Sounds like a heart attack. Listen, this is saying, learn from the people from your past. And you don't have to make that same mistake. Now, and, and, and now this statement is very, uh, man, this statement is very mm, aggressive because it has the word anger in it. God said that he was angry Verse 11, it says, so I declared an oath in my anger. Man, listen, uh, how many of you struggle with God being mean? You think that God is mean. That is me. It is a, I, I have to tell myself every day that God is not mean. But uh, reading this verse seems to not help me. But, and so let's look at the context of this. He said anger, anger. He, he was sworn to anger. So he declared an oath in my anger. That means that he was moved to anger. He was pushed to anger. A, a provoked. How many of you um, have that friend who calls you for advice all the time? 
And you, boy, you give your good advice too. I mean, you in your bag, life coach, therapist, you in there. Good stuff, telling them good stuff that, uh, that you could be posting on Instagram. Nah, 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 nah. Instead, you giving them the good stuff. And after every conversation, they say, thank you for this conversation. And go back and do the same thing. Then they call you again. Oh my God, so I'm just struggling with this. And you say, okay. I'm, I'm getting my bag again, okay? Get in your bag, you, you, and you tell them, all right, they got it this time. And then they leave. Then they go back, do the same thing. This is what it is saying. This is what that means that, uh, that he was pushed to anger. It is, it is like the Holy Spirit says, do this, stop this, go here. Gives great advice. And then they leave and do what they did in the old days. Wouldn't that make you angry? I mean, I know how that is firsthand. Roman, my seven-year-old son, needs help. Uh, the Holy Spirit is a helper. And so just to give you a picture of that, I'm going to be the Holy Spirit for a second. I see Roman struggling with something. And I want to help him. So I'm trying to give him advice. I'm trying to tell him what to do. What happens? Roman says, I got it. And it's high voice. And you know, please pray that my son drops octaves one day. That his voice don't stay there at 30 years old. I got it. Yeah, yeah, but Roman, you're doing it wrong. Let me help you out. I've done this before. I've seen what is ahead. Let me help you. I got it. I got it, Daddy. Dad, I got it. And in those moments, I'm not patient. I'm like, fine then. I get frustrated and upset. And guess what happens? Daddy, I need help. Here's the good news. I never de deny him help. Never deny. I can be angry as I want to be. But I always help him in the end. But I knew that he needed help in the first place. This is how God is pushed to anger. And he told the people of Israel that, that you will not find rest. And, and, let's, and let's look at that word rest. I looked what that word means. And it actually goes back to the beginning of that passage where it says that uh, Jesus, the, the builder was greater than a house. That word rest actually in in like Hebrew context, in the, in the most simplest form, means rebuild. That you will not be rebuilt if you do not listen to the Holy Spirit. That you won't find peace. That you won't find love. And not you being loved. But you will not find maybe what it means to, to be love, to feel love at its full capacity. Rest is like resting in Jesus. What I struggle with is that I am loved by God, but because of my hard heart, I deny it. And he has it for me. And I'm not able to feel it. I'm not able to rest in it. It's always there. And it always will be. But you 
will not be able to find or be rebuilt to be rejuvenated. And so the people of Israel, they were in the wilderness and they died off because they did not listen. And I want to hop down to verse 12. It says, watch out, brothers and sisters, so that there won't be in any evil in you. See it, brothers and sisters, that none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God, but encourage one another daily as long as it is, as long as it is called today so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. Uh, this is an urgency. It says now. It says right now. If you have an unbelieving heart, right now, in this moment, is, 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 is the time that you should do something about it. Let's look at unbelieving. What is unbelieving? Well, let's look at belief. Belief is love and trust in someone. Love and trust in someone. So unbelieving means not trust, and not fully loving someone. And, and this says your unbelieving heart, do you have full trust in God? Unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God. Why should you turn back to him now? It's because he has peace for you. If you're struggling with anxiety, I have been for the past few months. Never have I ever struggled with anxiety. It's, it's, it is new to me, but but if you turn back to him, if you allow the Holy Spirit to like help you to be a believing heart again, what you will be met with is peace that you don't understand. Joy that you don't understand. This supreme comfort, this, this, this coziness, this, this assurance, can be yours right now. Healing can be yours right now. If you decide to go on the journey to attempt to trust God and love God. And then it says this. So that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. Um, I, deceitfulness probably has the most brilliant strategy. It's the most patient thing. Deceitfulness just doesn't happen in a moment. It is deceitful. It is patient. It's very patient. It's, it's, it's almost like this. Um, um, uh, has anyone in this room been fishing before? Right? You, 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 uh, and you take a bait and you put it at the end of the line and then you throw it. And that bait a lot of times look like a fake fish, right? I just realized how mean we are. Isn't that mean? This is deceitful. If you like going fishing, you're deceitful. Because you have decided to put a fake fish on the end of a line, throw it out in the water, and fish is minding their business. Hungry. Enjoying their life. And here you come. Giving them rubber piece of something. 
Then they, they're excited. Oh, we got food. They bite on it. Then they get yanked up out of the water. Deceitful. But knowing and being a fisherman, you have to be patient. You sit there. You are sitting there in your deceitfulness waiting to catch a fish. Did I ruin fishing for some of you? No? Okay, great. I figured I did it. That is how like sin works. Is patient. Our hearts are deceitful. And then and then this verse it says Do not be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. Uh, deceitfulness is the symptom of not trusting God. And in some way, shape, or form, you stop trusting God. And then deceitfulness came. And, that, and, the, and those are hard things to hear. Those are hard things to hear. But let me tell you why this is important. Because God wants you to enter into his rest. As I shared my story in basketball, my coach, my teammates wanted me to finish. They wanted me to succeed. And what Hebrews 3 is talking about, Is that in this midst, like in the middle of this change, that like Jesus wants you to succeed. And you don't succeed, hear me. This is not a check all the boxes, make sure you do everything right. What it's actually saying is not, it's not an action based scripture, it is about where is your heart. And, and the actions will follow. Do you believe? Do you trust and love God? Just like uh, maybe your spouse, girlfriend, boyfriend. If you believe, then you will trust and love them. They will know it. They will see it. They will feel it. And in that, at the end of it, you are better for it. You will find rest. You will have it. You will make it through the change and you will be at a place that you have always dreamed of. One, in, in the Bible, the Israelites were enslaved so much and then stuck in the desert and in the wilderness attempting to survive. They wanted a vacation spot. They, they wanted a city, a space that there was that was their own with, with food and water and housing and community and feasts. And Hebrews 3 is saying, if you listen to the Holy Spirit, you will find that. If you listen to God. Now, what does it mean to listen to God? Those like little nudges that you have that uh, you are like, 
I don't know if this is God. I don't know if this is me. We're here at a U City. We believe in freedom to fail. Just go with it. Especially if it's good. If it's not harmful, just do it. You can't lose. Just like go with those little, 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 little nudges. And see where it takes you. Uh, let me pray for us. God, you are good and we um, I'm so thankful that um, you meet us where we are. You want us to enjoy you fully. You want us to enjoy you like rightly and 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 in who you are. And so if there's anyone in this room that that just needs motivation and change, know that they are loved. Father, love them. Know that you have went through this and that you are at the end of it. That, that the greatest prize is that you being with them. And that they get to like enjoy rest. That they are rebuilt. Father. That their home is rebuilt. That their job is rebuilt. That their personal life is rebuilt. That their relationship is rebuilt. We are asking you to rebuild. 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 There's, if there's a relationship in your life that needs to be rebuilt, Father, we're asking you to rest on it. And, and we are asking you in this moment to meet anyone in this room where they are, that they feel your love and grace, that you are with them. Hebrews 3 starts out with my family, my loved ones, my brothers, my sisters. Enter into my rest. Enter into what I have for you. Uh, and you may be tempted to like do it the old way. You may be tempted to not move forward and not finish. But Father, help us to know that it's not by our might that all we need just to do is spend time with you, Father. And forgive us in any way that that does not happen. Help us to rebuild trust, to fall more and more in love with you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.